Advances in technology and social media have given kids access to a much bigger world. But how is this affecting family dynamics? Dr. Barbara Greenberg has a doctorate in clinical psychology and is the co-author of Teenage as a Second Language, A Parent's Guide to Becoming Bilingual. And she's back with us today. All right, the kids are on Facebook, cell phones, everything you can think of. How's that affecting how these teens are being raised? Well, it's a very different time now. It used to be that if our parents wanted to make contact with us, and I can think of my own mother, they would call us from their window and say, Barbara, it's time to come in for dinner. And it was as simple as that. We were tired, we were hungry, we came up for dinner. And now, you kids are usually on their computer, they're on their cell phone, it's hard to reach them. They're very connected in all kinds of ways and parents have a lot more monitoring to do mm -hmm. and they have to learn not only teenage language but technological language so the task for parents has become much more complicated and i remember just when i was a teenager the cell phone was it was for emergencies only lock it up don't use it unless it was emergency i mean it was this big too but now mm -hmm. it's constant it's attached to people right so so it's very we used to get mail once a day i remember right. <laughs> we used to get mail once a day and it was so exciting to get mail once a day and it was sort of like opening up a present sure. getting mail but now we can open up an unopened message is sort of an uh, is so intriguing sure. and what's more it's ir irresistible than an uh, unopened message you got to get to it exactly so you can teens often and parents too have a very hard time disconnecting because there are messages waiting for you everywhere all right, right so what should you do i mean how much is too much and what should parents be doing about this a lot parents should be doing a <laughs> lot a lot more than they think that they can do first they really do need to set parameters around how much their kids can use facebook can be on their computer not only can they set these limits but they should set limits before they even give their kids cell phones or computers they have to let them know how much time they can spend on them. This is not going to be easy because this is like taking drugs away from an addict. Kids get very addicted, parents get addicted too. The parents should set limits. They also should let their kids know that the technology is a privilege, not necessarily a right. And they have to be good role models themselves sure. because the parents are often, and I'm guilty of this myself as well, I must admit, parents are often texting and checking their messages mm -hmm. as well. So you can't really tell your child to do something that you yourself are not doing. Just set a good example. Mm -hmm. Well, we know how popular Facebook is now. Um, are, should parents friend? their sons or daughters? That is a very, very interesting question. My answer to that is no, because your kids really aren't your friends. You know, how frequently do you tell your friends to do their laundry, their homework, or clean up their <laughs> room, right? Yeah, they're your kid. Right. So I would say no, not to friend them, but to monitor and let them know you're going to be monitoring their Facebook and every once in a while taking a peek. I do have to share a short story that happened to me with my daughter. I made the mistake of, when she was a teenager, not only friending her, but having the audacity <laughs> to write on her wall. I act, it was her mother writing on her wall, and she was humiliated. Aww. And now in her 20s, I'm still reminded of that. So you can, if you do decide to friend your kids, mm -hmm. do not write on their walls. This may be the best piece of advice that <laughs> okay. you ever get. You know what I've now done is that my other relatives have friended my son, so I don't have to worry about it. They, they monitor. Keep an eye on. Exactly. They monitor yes. what's going on on Facebook. This, the other thing to consider also is you don't necessarily want your teen to see what you're writing on your wall. That's right. Good point. Right? right? Even if it's innocuous, they may misinterpret something. Well, yes. thank you, Dr. Green for being with us. The name of her book again is Teenage as a Second Language. All right, and don't go away. There's much more Connecticut style coming up after the break.